something that comes up in some of the math that we're going to do is the idea of the Dirac delta function. What's tricky is to recognize that there's actually two different delta functions. The Kronecker delta function is a discrete function. So for instance, if I have delta m n, we've met this already. This is 1 when m equals n and 0 otherwise. The Dirac delta function is more of a continuous function, and this is the best definition of it. Now one thing that's a little bit tricky is to say, well, well, okay, fine, what does this mean? And in fact, one way to kind of visualize this, though it's a little bit dangerous, is that there is a, a spike, like an infinitely tall spike at x equals zero. So one of the ways that you might write this uh, instead is, for instance, x minus a. And now this actually moves the spike to position a. And so we could write this as, for instance, a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon, where epsilon is a little bit, this is still going to be equal to 1. So, so this is kind of another way to think about this, that, that the integral over your delta function is 1, but it's kind of infinitely thin. So as long as epsilon is not exactly equal to 0, this is still going to be true. So in general, we have to work with delta functions under an integral. It doesn't really make sense to talk about the delta function just on its own. It's not very helpful. Again, we can qualitatively talk about it as like an infinite spike at a given value. That's not actually very helpful on its own. So one of the ways, um, there's a couple of identities around it. There, this might be something you've encountered in other math classes before. It is something that comes up in physics a lot. But there's, there's a few uh, things that we might use it for. So for instance, if I have a function of x, and then it is multiplied by a delta function of x minus a, where a is a specific scalar value, that that is the same as, in fact, saying I have a function at x equals a multiplied by the delta function x minus a. So it's not valid to say, oh, f of x times delta is just that function. That's not true. You have to still keep the delta function there. So that's one of the ways where this is quite different from the Kronecker delta function, is that until you do the integral, you don't normally get to just drop it. So, so again, don't drop your delta function, your Dirac delta function, until you've done the integral. But usually we do try to make it go away. So um, if we then wanted to do that integral, for instance, again, negative infinity to infinity, or it could be limited. But we have f of x, and then we have that delta function. So what we get to say now is that, oh, this is the same thing as saying f of a delta of x minus a. And notice that this is now a scalar. This is a constant value, so I can pull that outside of my integral and I'm left with this integral. And again, the limits here, I've, I've written this two different ways for you over here. That one way is to say, okay, an integral over all space over a delta function gives you one. But as long as the value where that delta function is non-zero is included in your limits, it's equal to one. So this is equal to one. So we're left with your function at a given value just times one. So notice we started with this integral, we got to a specific value. But, but do remember that we can't just drop the delta until we do that integral. Okay, and there's going to be some, some other cases where it's, it's useful. Another identity that's helpful is if we have, um, let's see, if we have different, different functions other, under the integral that are equal. Um, than your, your functions themselves. Let's see. Uh, mm, yeah, I'm not sure if we'll actually need that. Sorry. So, so I hope that this is helpful. Again, it's something that pops up here and there. Um, and in particular, when we go to start thinking about our position representation and momentum eigenstates, talking about a well-defined position is in fact talking about a delta function. And so thinking about delta functions and then how that pops out here is going to be really important in that regard. Um, 
And again, it's a mathematical thing that, that comes up a lot. So I hope this is a helpful introduction. Again, the key is to recognize there's two different delta functions. This continuous function, so you'll see it as you know, delta of x or x minus a versus delta of mn, which was the Kronecker delta function. Okay.